Uh, I have a few examples just to demonstrate this concept a little bit, and then we move on to actual methods how to find these eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So here's the first example. It's not like a numerical example. It's more like a general example. It's an example of 2 times 2 matrix, which is a diagonal one. So it's the one which has some entries on the diagonal, and the other entries are zeros, like this. Let's just see what happens with this matrix. With this matrix, if you're comfortable, if you, no, you're really comfortable with the matrix multiplication, which I hope some of you are after almost two semesters dealing with the matrices, you probably can, after playing, out, playing around a little bit with this matrix, you can guess what will be the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And here's my guess. So it's not a machinery how to find them, but I'm just using the guessing machine for that. If I multiply my A matrix, this particular choice of the A matrix, by the first standard basis vector E1, remember that's the vector 1, 0. That's the arithmetic. Here's my matrix. Here's the vector, 1, 0. We all, know, we all know how to do multiplication. If you multiply this out, the result will be this vector, which you can transform into this expression, A1 times E1. Here's the example of the eigenvector, eigenvalue combination, isn't it? The scalar lambda will be taken, that's the A1, will be, will be playing the role of lambda scalar. E1 vector will be playing the role of X vector in this relation. And that's, that's the relation itself, isn't it? A times E1 equal A1 times E1. That's, that's exactly this relation, and your vector is non-zero. So this line alone gives me right to conclude that A1 is the eigenvalue of the matrix A, and... E1 is the associated eigenvector. Or if I use this language, the language of eigen subspaces, I can say that E1 is the member of the eigen subspace E subscript A1. Similar analysis. Similar analysis if I just check now. Obviously, if you try one of the standard basis vectors, why not try the other of the standard basis vectors? If I try the other of the standard basis vectors, similar arithmetic, have a look. Is my matrices and the vector. If I multiply things out, that's how it will, that's how it's going to, going to be. Zero A2 vector, which if you factor out A2, becomes, becomes a piece like this. And A2 becomes another. This line, this line, it's again the line of this type with a non-zero vector x. E2 now plays the role of the vector x. And you end up with, you ended up saying that, I ended up saying that e2, A2, sorry, it's the eigenvalue, another eigenvalue. And the associated eigenvector is the vector E2. And E2 is the member of the E A2 eigen subspace. I draw your attention to the fact that the eigenvalue, it can be zero. For instance, you can take this matrix where this entry is filled with zero as well, which, 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 is not going at, is, which is not going to affect this line. It's going to be zero vector on the right-hand side, but E1 will still be non-zero eigenvector. So the only requirement of, non, of being non-zero is the requirement for the eigenvector. The value is allowed to be zero value. Now, this diagonal example, I will take it to the any dimension because, in fact, in spectral analysis, in, in what you're going to do with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, diagonal matrices, they will play a specific, very special role. And that's why building our knowledge of the speci special treatments which exist around the diagonal matrices, it's, it's a good thing. And I'm going to do it. I mean, that's my, it will be my first step towards building your knowledge of diagonal matrices as a very special subclass of all other matrices. And I'm going to develop this example to any dimension. So look at this. In order to do that efficiently, in order to do that efficiently, I will introduce the following short annotations for diagonal matrices. You see, I wrote here the matrix, is my diagonal matrix, with entries A1, A2 on diagonal, and zero otherwise. Uh, for such a matrix, there, there is a better notation. Conven I mean, it's a uh, notation which is used in the yellow book, I think, as well. Your tutors will use it very often. Here it is. I can equivalently write my A like this, diag A1, A2. This writing, 
is the same as this writing, but it takes a lot less space because you just throw away unnecessary bits. That's zeros, they don't carry any information, and you don't write them in your notation. Uh, all right then, so if I argue by analogy now, by analogy, if I just take this example, and if I develop this example to n dimensions, if I take a matrix, and now I use my advanced notation, my efficient notations, if I take a matrix, diagonal matrix, with diagonal entries, look at this, a1, a2, many others, a n, so now I have n diagonal entries, so I'm looking at the matrix of n times n, and you see I'm just emphasizing this, I'm stressing the extra stressing here that we're looking at the square matrix of size n times n, Imagine what, how much space it would take on my slide if I wrote this in a square, the square block with a diagonal a1, a2, a n, and the rest filled with zeros. It probably would take like a, uh, it will take more space. It may, me, may, it may be better in terms of like showing you the metrics, but uh, these extra zeros, they don't, they don't really carry much of the information. So in this, in this shorter notations, that's what you. That's what you do. You just strip. You strip away from um, unnecessary unnecessary elements of this square writing. Anyway, if I argue by analogy, here's my diagonal matrix with the diagonal entries like so. I claim that if I multiply a diagonal matrix by the jth standard basis vector in the R, in the F n vector space. I'm not going to give you all of the arithmetic. In fact, if I follow my regular way of presenting things, I should do something like this. I should say here, these are my dots which hiding some, which hiding some tedious arithmetic of this type, of this type. And I hope you can check this on your own. So if you check that, you will see that if you multiply a diagonal matrix by the jth standard basis vector, that will be that can be converted into expression like this, and that means, so that will be true for any j between 1, 2, and n, and that means that every element of the, of the diagonal matrix, every element on the diagonal is the eigenvalue, and the associated eigenvector will be the j standard basis vector. And that's the development of my diagonal example. So in, in some sense, the spectral analysis or eigenvalue eigenvector analysis of diagonal matrices is very easy. Basically, we just done everything we could with it. We identified, well, every eigenvalue, even though the prefix every needs some clarification, but later on you'll see why I say every. I mean, there's no any other eigenvalues for the diagonal matrix besides those we just listed here. And we identified every eigenvector. Uh,